Welcome to the Elijah Rising podcast. Elijah Rising is an organization empowering women recovering from sexual exploitation. This episode is going to help you become more aware about the issue of sex trafficking and inspire you to take action. Hey, you guys, welcome back to the Elijah Rising podcast. I'm your host, John LaChapelle, and I am joined with my dear friend, Melody Jacobs. Melody, how you doing? Doing good. <laughs> so glad to have you. We are continuing our uh, 10-year anniversary series, just looking back at where the organization started and where we're going, uh, the things that we've learned, how we've grown. And so, Melody, I don't think our listeners know, some of them might not, that we started sending out volunteers in 2011 out on outreach to go to the brothels, cantinas, IMBs, and to really just bring the love of Jesus to women, to buyers, to traffickers. Can you give us a little bit of of the history? I know you came on a little bit later before we started, but share with us a little bit about the history of that. So I... I always, I just love how with Elijah Risen, they they started from, we started, I say they, but we have started yeah. from a, the prayer, a prayer group, mm-hmm. but also there was always that element of action, Yeah, you know? So I love that in the DNA of Elijah Risen, it was prayer, but also being the hands and feet of Jesus. Yes. And so I do know that intervention, um, it started out a little different in those beginning stages. Really, when I came on the scene, I actually mm. started uh, volunteering Oh, in on. interventions. And so I started there, led a strip club team, and it looks it looked different then than it does now. Not too, too much, but mm. we have been able to grow and mature and develop yeah. interventions. Mm. And so, um, like, for instance, whenever I started, we would have the, the basic, you know, safety rules about mm. parking and um, just those basic safety rules. Yeah. But there wasn't a whole lot of getting you specifically ready for mm-hmm. maybe what you're going to see in the strip yeah. clubs or yeah. in the illicit massage businesses. And so um, after, like, coming on staff and, and mm. really having a heart to see uh, intervention built out... Mm. Praying about it as um, a group, we just were like, we need to have more training. Yeah. You know, and so we've really been able to build out the training and, and preparing volunteers for what, what, what they're going to encounter, what it's going to mm-hmm. look like to walk into a strip club team. Oh, wow. You know, so. That's amazing. Yeah, I think that piece has been so critical, especially mm-hmm. since I've started, not only with some of the practical things, but also these spiritual parameters that we've mm-hmm. seen. You know, people like ourselves, when we got into the fight, we were passionate, we could see the need. But as we're working with some of these younger volunteers that are coming in, some of these people who are just new off the street, some of them aren't aware of the spiritual dynamic that they're actually encountering on the street. Can you speak to some of that? So yeah, I I remember in those early days having like a, a group of a team in the car, and it'd get quiet. And then all of a sudden, you hear from the back like, so what are we supposed to say? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> you <know>? gosh. <laughs> so, that's a good question. It is really a good question. Really good question. <laughs> you know, so we, we just, from volunteer orientation, from the moment people walk in, mm. we have the opportunity, volunteer orientation, intervention training modules to be unapologetic mm. about being a faith-based organization yeah. and spreading the love of Jesus. Mm-hmm. We do sure we have our multiple resources that we do hand out, mm-hmm. but our our most valuable resource is Jesus Amen. is the gospel. Yeah. And so bringing that to the table really helps people understand the culture mm. and you know, it gives a spirit. Not only a we. Not only do we equip people with uh, like here's a tangible reality and awareness of what mm-hmm. is happening, mm-hmm. but also here's a spiritual awareness of what you're going to encounter. Yeah. There might be heaviness. It's okay to reach out and mm. have us pray for you. Yeah. You know, um, we're praying before we're going out, which we've always done. Mm. But that emphasis of praying before we're going out, praying with people while stopping mm. for a moment and praying. Mm-hmm. And then if you need that prayer after, you can reach out to us. Yes. And so just bringing that, that spiritual element to the table you know, in in a little bit more in depth. Yeah, I know that's super good. I think for me personally, when I first stepped out onto the street as a 
prophetic individual, as a spiritual individual, individual, I would leave with this weight on me, and I'd be like, "Man, what? Am I depressed? Am I heavy? Like, what did I experience that really hurt me on the inside?" And the Lord was helping me see, "No, you're experiencing my heart." Mm-hmm. I feel this way about what's happening to these women. And so to be able to understand the heart of God in those moments, to understand that their people are blinded by deception. You know, there there's there's a spirit of deception to make someone think that an abuser is a lover. Mm-hmm. It's not love. And so helping train and develop a culture for people stepping into that is so powerful. Why don't you share with us a little bit? Elijah Rising's pioneering in some ways in Houston with with outreach. Share with us maybe some things that have worked really, really well. And what are some things that we've kind of had to pivot on? Like, okay, wait, let's not do that. (laughs) Sure, yeah. We always have those. Well, that didn't go as planned. (laughs) Pioneer. Yeah, yeah. So um, what's worked really well is bringing the training to the table, but also start creating a a mindset of not a project mentality, Mm. but a relational mentality. So engaging with women and you're not a project Mm -hmm. like for someone to be able to take what you have to offer, there has to be an investment. Absolutely. An investment often looks like relationship. Like, mm. hey, I, I want to sit here and I'm going to actually spend a little bit of time not necessarily talking your ear off to try to give you my resource, yes. but listening, mm-hmm. you know, um, taking, capturing notes after mm. you leave. Maybe you spoke with a Becky, which we don't have any Beckys, just... <laughs> <laughs> throwing that out there but maybe you spoke with a Becky and she has a daughter and she her daughter was sick and you prayed with her Mm -hmm. capturing those notes being more detailed in the notes Mm -hmm. so that when we go back the following month which a lot of places we can only go in once a month we can look back on our notes Mm -hmm. and say like hey if we encounter Becky again Mm -hmm. we'll be able to ask her like hey how's your daughter and pick up that conversation and seize those moments be a little more strategic so we've we've been able to develop that more and it's it's going well we're actually Mm -hmm. seeing a lot of fruit from that yeah what hasn't been well (laughs) (laughs) So um, we're starting to like, just for instance, with the illicit massage businesses, mm. there's there's um, a lot of cultural, because of the women that we encounter are predominantly of Asian descent, yeah. we're encountering some cultural um, understandings that, man, we look back and we're like, wow, we brought this huge gift in. And it actually, that's not necessarily good mm. because there's the element of shame in, mm-hmm. in the culture. So how do we navigate yeah. wanting to bring resources, wanting to build relationship, but doing it in a manner that we're being culturally sensitive? Absolutely. You know, what language, mm. what resource can we give that um, is actually going to be beneficial? Mm. So um, I had the bright idea one time. I'll give one of my oops. <laughs> <laughs> I had this genius, I thought it was a genius idea, is I'm going to put all of these, you know, if you're being trafficked cards in every language, mm. and all of the gifts except one that we would give, um, say, to the maybe the lady who was overseeing the women. Yeah. And so I was being strategic. You know, I had mm. the one gift for maybe the, the lady who would um, they would get in trouble with if they were carrying this. Mm. Well, that was a complete and utter disaster. <laughs> we, we gave it out and we prayed and it was great. And then the next month, um, our team came back. It was like, yeah, none of them wanted to talk to us. Aww. I was like, that didn't work. Yeah. We weren't speaking their language. Yeah. You know, so... Um, I was giving something that actually terrified them because immigration laws, cultural, there's mm. an element of the shame, you know? So mm-hmm. we, ha- we had to pivot that and start to really dive into, okay, how, how do we effectively be considerate, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and be mindful of where they are yeah. and their culture and, and what they've been raised in mm. and... And how can we build relationship with them in, in a sensitive manner? Yeah. So yeah, so we're we're and we're still learning. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's always room. There is always room for growth. If you feel like you've arrived, you're in danger. Absolutely, <laughs> you're in trouble. So we always want to keep an open mind of how how can we listen? Mm-hmm. How can we um, 
engage in a way that's sensitive. We've actually been able to build a lot of um, r- close relationships with women that are being prostituted. Mm. And so having the space to really listen to what their opinions and thoughts are mm-hmm. without being offended yeah. and giving that place um, for them to feel s- to feel confident that they can say this Mm -hmm. and not hold back because we've built that relationship with them and then learn and listen. Mm -hmm. What are the needs? What do we need to pull back from? Yeah. What do we need to be there for? Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah. It's a model that I think frustrates the minds of people because especially when we're first getting into the fight, we're like, we need a sledgehammer. We'll break down the door. We'll pull them all out. Like, Why don't you call the police? Why are people not getting involved in the slow and steady of relationship really is what you're saying is the the real key um, because of all the barriers that I think the enemy sets up Mm -hmm. to keep people from fully engaging in the deliverance that's available for them. And so can you talk to us about those relationships, how you build relationships? Um, Let's use Bissonette as an example. Traffickers, part of their strategy is to move the women around a lot so that they're not familiar with their environment, so they're not building key relationships with people mm-hmm. like our volunteers. What is the strategy for those those beautiful, quick moments that we get with these women? Some of them once every three weeks, once every mm-hmm. six weeks. What does that look like for our volunteers? So it's, it's really learning to listen. Mm. You know, let's put down our agenda. Yeah. Yes, our hearts are like, take the card, call the number. You want to call the number? You want to call the number? You want to call, <laughs> you know, which is like what we want. We, but we have to understand that we're not their savior. Yeah, come on. I have Jesus and all I can do is sit and offer you Jesus. Yeah. But I have to sit and, and show you that you can trust me mm-hmm. and, and perhaps sit and give the time and the space for Jesus to be seen through me. Absolutely. Come on. So um, it's, it's really listening and, and building relational ministry. Hmm. You know, I keep coming back to that. Uh, and it's big on my heart because yeah. we have seen the most fruit from it. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, this past Friday, you know, I sat and spoke with a young lady who, um, you know, our, our deep, deep just deep conversation was, Mm. hey, there's a spray you can get where you can spray it on your toes and you won't get blisters and you don't have to wear the ugly uh, (laughs) Band-Aids, you know? That, but those moments, even though it's kind of like silly and Mm. ridiculous and and most would say like, well, why aren't you telling her this or that? Or, Mm -hmm. but she... She already knows because one of them said like, oh, I have a different Rescue America card. <laughs> all the different designs you guys have. <laughs> She's literally kept all the cards, which I thought was hilarious. But, um, you know, just having those little moments mm-hmm. to where when she knows that I'm not looking at her as a project, yeah. I'm looking at her as another human. And so those moments, mm. actually, God will fill. Yeah. And, and it, it, it helps actually us as volunteers remember. Mm. Like, I remember her. I know her name. Mm-hmm. When I see her, and actually that's the first time I'd seen her in months. Oh, wow. You know? And she remembers me. She, she came over, and I, I quickly was like, hey, do you want a drink? And she was like, Miss Melody, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> she goes into, you know, I just, I changed my hair. <laughs> and, and then my heart, I'm like, oh my gosh, where have you been? And so you, when mm. you have that time to just have a conversation yeah. with someone and you find that ground, that mm. meeting ground of, um, you know, like where you can just talk, yeah. You actually will remember. Mm-hmm. And so we use those moments. So powerful. Because maybe we won't see them, mm-hmm. you know, for months at a time. But when they come back to the table, there's there's that little bit of relationship. And so mm. we have to remember that it takes time. I always say this is a second mile ministry. Yeah. You know, you have to be willing to walk the second mile because mm. you have those moments where you might have to wait to continue that relationship for a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Um, and also to remember that um, this, you know, is by faith. Everything mm. we do is by faith that God's going to use it. We might be the ones planting seeds and someone else mm. might reap that yeah. harvest Amen. or maybe we will. So we're, we're in this together mm. and ultimately it's the Lord's. Yeah, come on. Man, that is so beautiful. And I think everything you shared really is a demonstration of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Like, as you said, we 
we cannot be the savior. And I think when people recognize that the pressure really is off of us, it invites that authenticity that you're speaking about where they think about that moment that they had with you. You're a mother. And I think there's, there's several mothers out there. And so for these women to get a tangible touch from a mother who gave them advice about their toe blisters, like they're, they're going to remember that Mm -hmm. in environments where they're not mothered, where they're not fathered. And it's those seeds that the Lord waters. Mm -hmm. So I just really appreciate you sharing that. Another thing that I want to add is like a subsequent question would you talk about the etiquette, you know, that you train your volunteers in tone, word choices? You know, you talked about listening. All of that is so important when we recognize the demographic that God has called us to. They're marginalized. They're exploited. They're taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. How does that whole etiquette, body language, posture, how do we train our volunteers to really relate in healthy, empowering ways with survivors? Sure. So that was another reason why we started to implement a deeper, a more in-depth training Mm. is because you have those moments and and they can be short Mm. to show, display a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, us in the church, and this is one of my major things that I like to train on is, you know, we we say, can I pray with you? And we grab hands with people, you know, because that's what church and ease does. Yeah, yeah. no, me too. I do it all the time. So, um, but but to let's let's throw in another perspective. Let's Mm -hmm. take the opportunity to say like, May I, may I touch you? Like, yeah. hey, let's pray. Can I have your hand? Yes. Like getting permission mm-hmm. to just, um, you know, touch someone's shoulder, mm-hmm. which, you know, every day it's not necessarily that big of a deal, mm. but it is giving a different perspective. Like, hey, someone actually asked me if yes. they could touch me instead of just assaulting me. Wow. You know, and also too, like mm. we... Um, we want to be careful and be considerate of like using the language. We are to be in this world, but not of this world. Mm-hmm. And so though I do, I have a very, um, you know, large understanding of the type of language because it does have its own terms and, mm. and whatnot whenever you're dealing with pimps and just that whole culture. Sure. Um, the the prostitution culture, I guess it's like a whole nother. I, mm. I understand the 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 life yeah. terminology. Um, however, I don't have to. I don't have to use that word or that that title over a young lady. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, you know, and and I want to teach our volunteers that we don't have to go there. Mm-hmm. We can we can be in the world, but not of the world. Mm. So that's important. So we just, we want to bring etiquette to the table that number one, two, like it'll help our volunteers feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. When I go into a situation understanding what I'm going to see and what's, um, what my parameters are, I'm going to be more comfortable in my skin. Absolutely. And that is a reason, another reason why we like to train that etiquette is because I, if I walk in awkward, mm. a young lady's going to tell. I mean, before I even open my mouth, yeah. body language, you know, just in the very nature of their surroundings, they have to understand and learn body language. Mm-hmm. Like, that's survival, yeah. you know? So if um, I go in and I'm awkward and my body language is saying I'm awkward, mm. th- it's going to be very hard to build a relationship. Yeah. But if I understand like, Hey, you know, stay away from this word or that word. Mm. Um, don't talk so much. Li- be a listening ear. Mm-hmm. Be m- mentally in your head. Say, I'm going to look at someone's face. Yes. <laughs> you know, you're, you're seeing things that you don't normally see. Mm-hmm. So, um, having that mental like decision, like I'm going to look at people's faces and Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be considerate of what I say and, and Mm -hmm. asking permission to pray, asking permission to hold hands with someone. Those kind of things is going to make one feel more comfortable Mm -hmm. to just engage with those who they're encountering on intervention. Yeah. It's, bringing dignity back to the individual and i'm just as you're talking i'm just really feeling the lord like when we ask permission to lay our hands ask permission to hold hands it's actually creating something in them that was taken 
And I just see the Lord restoring that dignity of choice, that empowering to choose. And so really, I think if, if people can hear this and understand that it's not these big moments, it's these little moments where God is working in the details to bring about a redemption that is so far beyond what we can even comprehend. And so thank you for sharing that. It's really, really special. So I'm going to kind of make a little announcement. <laughs> So you went from an intervention specialist to intervention director to you are now our new restorative care director. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, But having been in that role, I want you to just cast vision to our our listeners. Where do you see intervention going in the next five to 10 years? Like as you forecast with God what you desire what you believe he's doing through the intervention arm of this organization, what would you say? What would, what do you see? Oh, like, Oh, this, this is the fun part. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, I want, I would love to see for him interventions, having more intervention sites. Mm. There are areas in and around this city that are in desperate need Mm. of intervention teams, of those teams that can go in and build relationships Mm -hmm. so that if a lady does want to exit, she, she knows she can safely Mm. talk about it. Yes. You know, so having just more intervention sites would be fantastic. Mm. Um, I, I've driven through places and I'm like, oh my gosh, my heart is breaking because if we had another site here, yeah. wow, you know, so, uh, yes, that, that, and also, um, I believe that Elijah Risen has been positioned to help train, mm-hmm. you know, maybe there's other, and it doesn't have to be like, uh, you know, intervention site in this state or that state or Elijah Risen intervention site in this state or that. It doesn't have to be Elijah Risen. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's an organization in a different state that um, has a passion for awareness and they also are seeing the need for outreach. But mm-hmm. they, like, where do we begin? Mm-hmm. I, I would love to see Elijah Risen be able to say, like, hey, here, here is 10 years worth of uh, training that we mm-hmm. have worked out. Yeah. Let our ceiling be your floor. Amen. Yeah. And go farther. Why? Why? Why would a, a, pro, a nonprofit or a ministry that is, has mm. a heart and a passion mm. for outreach have to go through ten years of learning the very thing that we have already learned? Exactly. Isn't it kingdom to mm. say you will go and do greater than this? Yeah. So I would love to see us as an organization be able to just offer the experience mm. that we've we've learned some by trial and error, some mm. by other outreaches, mm. and and say here take what we have and then make it your own and and do greater things with so it. So good, Mel. So that that right there, those two things, more mm. intervention sites. And to be able to be a, a place where people can come and and receive training mm. so that they can go and, and do outreach in their cities and their mm. states. And come on. Communities. As you talk about the different intervention sites that you desire to see across the city, just really quickly, can you break down what some of those sites look like? We referenced Bissonette, which is just really an open air sex market on a main street. Can you talk about some of the other places that our volunteers uh, intersect, just to give our listeners a, a larger scope of where we touch mm-hmm. in the city? Absolutely. So, like, right now, like hotel awareness, for example, mm. we have five routes of hotels mm. that we could target right here out of just the Houston intervention, which is already mm. a back up and running again. Yeah. But we have no volunteers or team members to lead those. Mm. You know, so we have uh, Bisnet's not the only track mm-hmm. in the in uh, in and around Houston. Yeah, there are other ones, and for the sake of time, I won't go into this in this place in this sure. place. But but to have that well trained uh, team that would be able to target different mm. different tracks in and around the city mm-hmm. would be huge. Yeah, absolutely. Cantinas, Cantinas is um, a big one as well. Literally, the researchers call it the Houston model when they're speaking and teaching on cantinas. We need teams for cantinas. Yeah. There's the Ship Channel area. There's other areas. Mm. There were cantinas here in the Heights mm-hmm. area. So um, 
those are some aspects. Illicit massage businesses, the numbers are growing daily. Yeah. So having teams that could target those areas mm-hmm. um, in Katy, we, we need an intervention site in Katy. We, we, that's an area right now that we had one at one point, mm. but um, is, is needed. It, yeah. it's, we need an intervention site in Katy. Mm. So. Yeah, I think our marketing director just shared with us recently, David, that the illicit massage businesses are growing at a faster rate than L.A. County. Mm -hmm. which is, I mean, LA being one of the top three cities in the nation is saying something. Mm -hmm. So there's, there is a lot of need. And I think even out of the vision that you just casted for us with listeners all over the world, Mm -hmm. how would you cast the net for people that are listening, that are being stirred by what they're hearing? What are some ways that they can one, get involved, but two, Mm -hmm. what kind of person are you looking for? What kind of person do you think God is bringing to this particular arm of the work? Because I think you have some people who are stirred, but they might be, in, in my pillar, they might be intercessors, they might be worshipers to really declare the word of God and exalt God over these issues. What does a typical intervention volunteer look like and what are you looking for? Sure. Let me first start out by saying like the intercessors, mm. like Come. Yes. <laughs> because come. Intercessors. Come. come, intercessors, come. Because ask and you shall receive. Yeah. And the the places where we have had teams go out and pray, not mm. even go into places. Yeah. M- go like mobile intercessors. Yes. Go in cars and pray over areas. We have seen the Lord bring mm. in people to then go into mm. those specific um, IMBs and, and places like that, and we've seen a lot of fruit. Amen. So we could put intercessors. If maybe it's it's like okay, I'm called to prayer. Mm. Um, then come and we'll put you in a car with mm-hmm. a team that's going to go in, and you can pray while the teams are in. Yeah. So please, yes. we actually have one. Uh, we have one mobile intercessor. <laughs> Don, he's amazing. <laughs> Shout out to him. Yeah. But he actually uh, goes and he stays in the car while our strip club team, which is all ladies, it mm. can only be all ladies, yes. goes into the clubs and they they just visit and minister to the women. Our, our strip club team, they said, like, we love when he comes because we literally can feel the difference. Mm. So we want... It's amazing. J- Jesus passionate people. Mm -hmm. That's what our volunteers look like. Because really, like I said before, that is the reset, the the resource, the main resource that we Mm. want to bring to the table. I always tell our volunteers, ask them. It's okay if they say no, but just ask, can Mm. I pray with you? Can Mm. I bless you before? Because we always want to leave that, that gift of, of Jesus's presence or mm. love mm. with them. Amen. You know, we can still, even if they say no, we are still displaying Jesus's love, but we always want to give that, that room for him to do more than, more than what we can even do in a mm. moment by mm. just conversating a normal conversation. Mm. And so, um, volunteers, we, you know, we actually have quite a bit of volunteers in our, our volunteer portal. Yeah, we do. Where are you guys? Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I know that with the pandemic, um, a lot of volunteers, you know, we, we had to stop interventions mm-hmm. for a while for obvious reasons. Yeah. So if you were a volunteer before the pandemic and you were serving, man, we'd love to have you mm. reactivate and yeah. come back. And then we have the new volunteers that are coming to the, you mm-hmm. know, to the table as well. Absolutely. We want those guys as well. Mm. So if you have a passion to reach people, if you love like building relationships, mm. even in the hard places, yeah. then we want you. Yeah. Amen. You know, we, we, and, and if, even if you feel like, Ooh, can I do that? Yes, you can. Cause we have a beautiful training platform. We do. Uh, yes. <laughs> like if I can do it. You can do it. When I first gave my life to Jesus, it was me and Jesus, and I was okay with that. Mm. And, I, and I was not a very outgoing person. I did not like street evangelism. I will confess it right now. was <laughs> not my, I just, I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Spirit would say, go and pray for this person, and I would break out in a cold sweat. Oh. <laughs> my answer, because I'm like, really? I'm literally just going up to someone and saying, 
Jesus loves you. <laughs> it was so hard. <laughs> but now I'm like, hi, Mr. Pimp. Would you like prayer? Yeah, I'm like, who <laughs> so, is that woman? <laughs> so God can bring you from point A to point B because Amen. really it's him. Amen. And we just get to partner with him. Hmm. And it takes the responsibility off of us. Yes. And usually when it's not something that's like you think you couldn't do, then great. Then you're out of it and the Holy Spirit can move. Yeah. So please come. Yes. We'll help. Please we'll, come. we'll partner. We, we're, we don't send volunteers out just... Just by themselves, mm. we we have team leaders who have been trained and doing this a while. So you're partnered with them. Mm-hmm. Jesus sent them out two by two. We sent them out two by two yeah. when in groups, and then you partner together and walk around and talk to people. So, mm. so yes, it's it's safe. We'll train you. Come. Awesome. So for people who just caught that, just a real quick, what's the practical step? There's a the, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> the practical step. Um, so you can get on our website mm. and uh, you can see where it says become a volunteer. Mm. Click that. Sign up in our time counts, Elijah Rise and Time Counts. That's our, our volunteer platform. Mm. You'll receive an email that says, hey, sign up for a volunteer orientation. Mm-hmm. Um, on time counts, you'll see a tab that says volunteer opportunities. If you click on that, you'll see different intervention sites you can sign mm. up to be a part of. And also our next volunteer orientation that you can sign up to be a part of perfect so also too um and from there we, you do the volunteer orientation we have training modules and mm. then you can start to really plug in to the intervention site that's closest in your area awesome um if there's any issue if you're having trouble remembering like the steps or you can't find it you can reach out to mm. me melody at elijahrisen.org you can call us here at the office. They're going to direct you mm-hmm. either to the new volunteer coordinator that's coming in mm-hmm. or to me, and, and we will definitely get you plugged in. That's awesome, Mel. Yeah, and just for those of you who are called to be stewards, you can go to elizarising.org slash donate. We are reaching the women every week with resources, food, clothing. Um, women come, especially on Bissonette, to our table every week just to be resourced with things that they need that they aren't directly getting from their trafficker. And so all of your resources, all of your donations go to help supporting the work of ending human trafficking in our region. And so just as a final question, Mel, how do you define success in this line of work? You know, we send out volunteers every week and it's not like these women are coming out in droves. How are these people volunteers sustained week after week? Well, what's their reason why um, as they continue to go out? Sure. So a a lot of times success is seen through faith. Mm. You know, like we we give a resource to a young woman and we have to see it from a place of victory because maybe we won't see her again. Mm -hmm. Maybe we won't see her for a couple of months. And so it's by faith. Mm-hmm. that we say like, God, you've called us to this and you've been faithful. He, God has been so good to give us his, like his history. Mm. What is our history with God? Well, we've had these moments where we had a young lady who we encountered in a strip club actually drive by and see mm. uh, our team, yeah. realized it was the church ladies mm. and stopped and gave this beautiful testimony about how um, how she had left a club and decided, because of the prayer and the encouragement of the team, decided mm. to get back into the career she had, um, she had a degree for. Oh, wow. Um, success is having a, a young woman who we've been working with start to decide, like, you know what? I am going to reach out for a... Do- I'm, I'm going to dare to believe and reach out for a new lifestyle. Mm. Wow. And maybe she might not be out of it. It it, it doesn't look um, real clean, Mm -hmm. but that's okay. You know, that life is messy. Mm -hmm. And we see that all throughout the scriptures. So we have our history with God. So we see those moments Mm. as success when by faith, we pray with this one. By faith, we give a card to this one. By faith, we sit down on the cooler at one o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. and laugh about something ridiculous Mm. by faith. Yeah. That's what success looks like. That's amazing. Well, and I've seen you just practically pursue individuals and text them, take them to government aid offices, making sure they have what they need, going with you to where their children are being held just to hold and kiss their baby and pray over them. And so I just, I want to honor you 
for not being someone who's going after the masses, but you really are intent to go after the one. And I think if people can have that mindset, that heart of Jesus of, I'm going to carry this woman that I met this Friday in prayer every day. And I'm going to believe that God's going to not only bring redemption to her life, but complete restoration. And so in for the men out there, I want to speak to you. As Mel shared, we have men who come, they drive, they sit in the car, and they pray. We have men on the street who are godly examples of fathering, of, of masculinity, who just their presence alone disarms and creates safety for the women, for the volunteers, and, and is a sign and a, and a display to some of these traffickers, to some of these buyers of, of godliness on the land. And so if you're a man, this, this invitation is for you too. This isn't just for the women. And so, Mel, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. This has been such an informative and equipping conversation, and we hope that it's been encouraging to you. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we are really pulling on the city for intercessors. And even if you're not in the Houston region, we uh, have prayer once a month specifically for um, the city, for these different demographics, the cantinas, the IMBs, and we live stream all of those prayer sets. And so you can absolutely jump on and engage in that place of intercession with us. But um, you can email prayer at ElijahRising.org. If you or someone you know is, is desiring to jump in the fight through prayer and worship. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, until the next episode, God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us today for this episode. If you were inspired by this content today, please share, rate, and leave a review. Also, please consider making a donation at ElijahRising.org slash donate. Your support helps us continue the vital mission to combat sex trafficking. Until next time.